Hi everybody, Lars here. Um, welcome to a beautiful Saturday morning in Buffalo, New York. Well, actually it's in the middle of winter, so it's cold and snowy, so I'm not sure how beautiful it is, but that's why we love our snowblowers in this area here. Um, today we're gonna talk about Fusion 360, more specific Fusion 360 Cam. So Fusion 360 comes in two flavors. There is the standard, and that actually has two and a half axis cam right in it. And then there's an ultimate that also have three axis. So that's like swoopy surface and things like that. What we're gonna look at today is the standard package, two and a half axis. Um, and if you are a experienced CNC programmer or machinist or you're a tool maker, you might find that you gotta for fast forward a little bit in this series because really what we wanna try to do in this series is getting down and sharing some of these tips and tricks that um, that there is in the trade of machining and maybe for people who haven't um, had so much exposure to it maybe you can get give a couple of tips and tricks on how to approach uh, the job so let's take a look at what i have on the screen here and um, let's dive into it with some different machining so what you see on the screen is a pretty standard two and a half axis part here let me just uh, x out of our uh, recent data so we get a little bit more real estate. So what we have is this two and a half axis part and there's a couple of different operations we have to uh, to do this part because I'm going to approach this as this was a standard you know uh, CNC machine like a Haas or something like that. Now the first thing we will do is we actually have you know the different uh, areas over here um, so we uh, the different categories within inside of Fusion 360 and the cam is the last one here, so make sure that you have that one uh, activated here. And then what we will do is we, we normally will take a little bit of a look at the part and just kind of like get an idea about where should we start and, and what should we go with. So there's going to be a couple of setups for this part, first of all. Um, we're going to have to uh, machine off um, and clean up this raw block of steel we have. And uh, and then we're going to have to put this part maybe holding in a device on a machine and we're going to have to do a couple of operations because not only do we have these uh, this pocket with a boss in the center, we have a threaded hole in the center, we have some counter bars, and then of course since this is coming out of a raw stock uh, material, we also probably going to have to go on the back side and clean that off. And then we have like this uh, slot on the side of this part with a couple of other holes in it. We're gonna have to drill um, in there. So that's gonna be a couple of setups on the part, but not not a big issue um, to do, and especially with Fusion uh, 360, it, it is really easy to kind of like get these uh, get go through these steps. So we're gonna do it all together. We're gonna talk a little bit about again uh, about why we're doing certain things. So if you are a little bit unsecure some of the tools you would use um, and, and how you should go about uh, doing that. So the first thing I will do is I will go in and create what we call a setup. Now a setup um, is pretty much how is this part sitting out at the machine, right? Because out of the machine, things are pretty established um, on, on your capabilities out there. You have a machining table, you maybe have a vice there. Um, and uh, but in the computer it's a little bit more flexible and, and, and when you're bringing parts in sometimes the parts are, are flipped upside down there's no rules about what is up and down on a part so how you approach it to machining it might be different than the guy who, who designed it if it was not if it was not yourself so pretty much what we're doing in the setup dialog is that we're telling we're telling the software how things are out of the machine so maybe the best way to to kind of like describe that is, is some of the things we have determined is if I have this, well, this tissue box here, um, that where, how is it going to sit in the machine? When we are standing in front of the machine, we have opened the doors. Is it sitting like this or is it sitting like this? And then also where is our block uh, on the machining table? So we also got to determine where are we going to pick up the stock? Uh, so we we machining so our code that we're going to produce is actually going to machine the part and not somewhere out in space where where it's so that's what we're doing in the job setup pretty much just saying where that is so I will click on the job setup and over to the right here we get this little uh, dialogue and the easiest thing to do when you're working inside of Fusion 360 
is to work from the top down and then through the different tabs or different pages. So in this part here, we have three different tabs. There's a model, there's a stock, and then over here we have a post process. Um, that will let us do a couple of extra things with our post process, and we're gonna get to that scene later. So starting on the model, you here are doing your work coordinate system. And what the work coordinate system is, is again, we are telling the machine where we are picking up the part. So again, the tissue box is our part here. And what we can do is we can tell with this 3D nomen that looks somewhat like this here, we can tell it what is our Y direction, what is our X direction, Z direction up and down, and on where on the part are we going to pick it up. Okay, so that's where our um, um, coordinates are going to come from, x and y, almost like you did in school on a graph. So x plus, y plus, x minus, y minus. So that's what we're going to tell out then. You will see on the screen we actually have this nomen, uh, we call it 3D nomen down here uh, that, we can, that we can control. So right now it's telling me that the z plus is going in this direction. And Z plus is normally your spindle going up and down out of the machine. So I want to change that. So we start with the first one over here and you will see we have kind of like a drop down. We can control where what we're going to use to move that 3D gnome in the middle of the screen. I normally just use the select Z axis, what is the up and down on your machine, and then uh, you can move the X axis. So I'm going to select that one. And now I can just select um, a face on my 3D model. So I can select this top face and you will see that as soon as I do that, the 3D gnomon will move. So now we're pointing up, <laughs> great. That's the direction that I wanna do for the first setup on this machine is I want the ZX to go up and down. That's gonna be the first side I'm gonna select. Now you will see that you have check boxes over here so you can flip the direction if you want to do that. And the same thing with the X axis. So again, depending on how this part's gonna fit inside the machine, how it's rotated, we can move that. If we wanna move it, we can just um, use a edge of, uh, on our model. So if I select this edge here, you will see that the Z axis, or the, sorry, the X axis is gonna go along it, right? And if I hit the red X, it's gonna go back to, to the normal. So this is actually how I want it to display it. Now, the next thing we have to do is we're gonna have to tell the machine, now what we've established, how this part is sitting with what is the Z direction up and down. We also have to tell it where the program is gonna come from. So when the part is sitting on the table, where is it placed on the table? And we call that the work coordinate system. Uh, many times on your machine, this will be called G54. That's kind of like an, an, a norm that G54 is where the zero zero point is on your part. Um, if you're not that familiar with that, I would definitely recommend that you check out your, uh, your machine's manual um, and, um, and, and look in there. If you don't have that, you know, you maybe want to either go online and see if you can find it there or maybe contact a, a, a local uh, reseller in your area. But you should definitely confirm that um, because with the wrong work coordinate system, things can can it's not going to work so you need to get the right one in there g54 is normal may maybe on that is the same on your machine but just be aware of that so check your machine manual about that now where we're going to pick up the part is always dependent on on, on different things it, it could be that there already were a hole uh drilled in the in the part that will be a good place to say all right i know where this hole is i can use that um, what we're going to uh, think of here is that we have a raw piece of steel uh, that we're going to machine this part out of. So when it comes to that, we normally will go down and we have some different options down here under origin. Um, you can either <clears throat> select a point, what will just be uh, a point on your model, a vertex of an intersection of two edges or something. Um, then you also got the, the stock Point. Now the stock point comes from our second tab up here, what is the size of our stock. And we have some different options in here to define the stock. Now if you, if you do have the stock, you can use this fixed size stock and you can put in the value. You should always measure, physically measure your stock, always. 
um, if you have it. Sometimes when we, when we do programs on the machines, we don't have the stock yet. So if we don't have the stock yet, we can use something like relative size box. And you will see here that Fusion 360 already comes out with a bunch of help um, menus on the, on the screen so you can kind of like read just help you can read out of there but what relative size box does is it creates a it takes the 3d model on the computer screen and it creates a boundary box around it well, it's pretty neat right so it just analyzes the part and says all right this is the part and then you can add some extra material to the part here what we normally will do you know we, we don't order the stock that the, the exact size we normally want to machine leave a little bit of material so we can machine it just going to leave this at one millimeter but what this does by putting this in on the second tab is that when we go back to the first tab we can now select and know we are selecting the right place so what i'm going to select for this part here thinking that this is a raw block of steel is i'm going to select this upper corner up here and the reason that i'm selecting this upper corner and not let's say this corner instead is that this corner is what i'm picturing <clears throat> to be against my solid jaw on my vice so i'm going to hold this part in a vice i actually have uh have that i can show you what i have here is another fusion model where i've actually placed my model inside on a table in a vice now that's kind of neat and if you if you have the time to do this i definitely recommend because now you can actually you know, you get a little bit better reference, representation of what is what is happening out of the machine. Um, and, and you can now get some different, uh, you know, dimensions from this. But um, sometimes you don't have time for this. And, and we're going to program this part as if it was not an advice. I wish had, didn't have that time. But it's a good way to show some of the things that, that is necessary to know. Because this, this whole jaw here is our movable jaw. It can actually move back and forth, right? And this is the, the solid jaw back here, it cannot move. So we really, when we pick up our part, we wanna use an edge or a face that is against that and not the movable jaw. So that's why that we are actually, uh, when we go into, and now exit it out of it, when we go in to, um, I have to do it over, select this face. When we go in to select the box, we're gonna select the, the corner up here that is up against the, the, the jaw. And this is uh, a fairly common um, corner to use for a couple of different reasons. One of the reasons is also be aware that when you select this corner up here, you now know that every when you look at your code later on, that every dimension should pretty much be plus in X. They should all, all be minus in Y. So if you ever saw something different, it could be a quick, whoa, you know, something is not right. Normally when we make mistakes in, in, in CNC machining, it's human error and it can be pretty bad. So, um, so, so definitely, you know, be, be careful with that. But so I'm going to select this upper corner here as the place. Now, the two last ones over here really only matter when you are inside an assembly as I, as I was before. What I would do inside on a norm, if I was inside an assembly like the one I had with the vice, is that I would select my model here to specify that that's what I'm machining and not the vice and the table and all the other things. But we're not gonna worry about that. So we have we have just told uh, in this dialog box, in this job setup, we have told uh, what there is up and down out on the machine. And then we have told it where we want to, to pick it up in, in the corner with, uh, with the setup stock. Now to wrap up this section uh, of, of the video here, um, you know, there's a lot of different tools you can use for that out at the machine that you should be aware of. Um, and, and some of the tools can be, can be fairly expensive. Um, if you do not have the tooling, I would definitely recommend that you check out a page like MSC. Um, they are, they are maybe not the cheapest, um, but they have so many machine tools. So if you don't have a lot of these tools already, if you're so new that you, you need to go out and buy them, the neat thing about MSC is that they ship, uh, in with this, uh, with arrival overnight. So you have parts the next day. Um, but like I said, they are a little bit more expensive, uh, than other places. And other, if you want a really cheap place, you can go to like something like Harbor Freight, but now you're talking about also, you know, it's probably not some tools you want to use your rest of your career i'm definitely against going into debt uh, debt for tooling so you know you got to pick what you what you need to use a couple of the different tools you could use to pick up the part of the machine 
would either be something like what is called an edge finder looks like this it actually has uh this little thing can shift there's a spring inside of it so you put it inside of your machine and then it spins really fast and then when it touches um um, the corner it will it will move uh, for you um, when it when it's right over the edge. You just got to remember to take half the diameter of this thing up here. That's kind of like one of the cheaper solutions and, and pretty good. Um, the other thing is to use something like an indicator. Uh, these are a little bit more expensive, and uh, you know if you're just uh, starting out, I don't know if you I would recommend you maybe buying one of these the first day. Um, and you could also have a machine that maybe have a, a probe on it, like a laser probe that can go in and touch it off. So just be aware of that. But these two tools, you can definitely buy those uh, online or somewhere else. So that's a couple of tools you probably want to, at least the edge finder is probably something you want to go out and buy. And I'm not sure how much they are, but they're, they're not that, that expensive. So let's wrap up the, the first video here um, with we got our job set up. And then in the next video, we will actually get into... Uh, to start machining, putting some toolpath down on this part.